This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com. So it is in the history books. UFC 250 took place again at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, in your main event, Amanda Nunes. What do you want to say? I mean, just kind of wiping the floor here with Felicia Spencer. Did it totally at ease. BC, go first, my good friend. Number one, what can you say about her performance? And then, you know what, let's just start there. Assess for me how she did. Did you learn something new? What can you say about how Amanda Nunes performed on Saturday? Yeah, crowner, Luke. She is who we thought she was, the greatest female of all time. Look, when you're this dominant consistently, all you can do as a pundit or fan or whatever is try to concoct some scenario in which there's a potential that a fight can be competitive. This time it was, oh, the quarantine, the ankle injury, the baby on the way, all that stuff moving up to featherweight for the only the second time in the UFC. But at the end of the day, when we spelled out the potential positives in Felicia Spencer's game. And by the way, I have nothing bad to say about Felicia Spencer. Uh, the only elite skill I really thought she had was, was size, toughness, and durability. And in the end, that was what she flashed in spades going the five-round distance. Yes, you could have stopped this fight, and maybe you should have as early as the third round, certainly the fourth and the fifth. But at the end of the day, Amanda Nunes, you know, can't be rattled. She came off that tough fight against GDR in the rematch. She had mentioned a weight cut was a problem. She's a beast at 145. Her technique, her speed, the right hands. But even if you look deeper into the wrinkles, and as Professor Salt and Pepper, I know you do, Luke, her takedown defense was fantastic. Her cardio over five rounds. If you were waiting at any point, for a door to open up for Felicia Spencer to, to, to stick half of her toe in there. It just wasn't going to happen. And that's why Amanda Nunes is this great. What else are you going to say, Luke, right? She's the queen. Yeah. Bow, bow she, down, she, brother. I mean, there's not much I can really add to that, except I think you're absolutely right. You know, we looked on paper. And we're like, okay, on paper, how much of a mismatch is this between Spencer and between Nunes? Pretty significant. I mean, you, Amanda Nunes had the reach advantage. She had the experience advantage. She had, if you look at the, the fight metric numbers, she had better striking totals, better striking defense, better takedown defense, better takedown accuracy. There was nothing you could really say, but okay, the win streaks are hard to keep going. It's a different weight class. Let's just see what happens. All right, well, we did. You kind of indicated to it, but it's worth repeating here. You know what's funny? If you go back and you look at her losses, particularly like the Kat Zingano loss, and then you look at who she is today, I mean, this is a completely different fighter. The only thing that really kind of holds up is the power is the same between then and now, but the way she applies it, the way she manages a fight, all the other pieces of the game have undergone, if not growth, outright revolution. It's incredible to see the transformation. And listen, I'm not here to say that you know women's 145 is the deepest weight class. It's not. But I also just don't want to take anything away from Amanda Nunes. Not only is she technically superior to her foes, or at least you know maybe she's not a better striker per se than Durandamy, if you want to make that case, but the totality of her game gives her more aces in the hole, so to speak. But what's also interesting to me is, in addition to this sort of wide-ranging technical superiority, she's just physically more dominant than these other women, right? She can, as we saw, put hands on you in a way that maybe no other woman we've ever seen can. She also has very good... Uh, so sort of physicality when they clinch up. She was ragdolling Felicia Spencer in these other moments, throwing her side to side. And this was the weight class above 135. So to me, it's like, listen, man, the only way at this point that she's going to get caught is if she makes a tremendous error, she stops caring, or Father Time d decides to intervene. Because other than that, these other ladies just don't have a prayer. She is so far in front of her competitors, it's almost like I mean, you know, Shevchenko is, is close. I get that, but in you know, in terms of the other 135ers or the 145ers, I mean, there it's not even it's not even doable to make a 145 I mean, pound match that's even remotely competitive at this point. You know, she sealed up her intangibles so tight, meaning you don't see her gas out. She has a great chin. You're going to have to be a thinker, Luke. I mean, we got to give, in hindsight, Jermaine Durandamy credit for being tough in that rematch, but sort of 
trying to get the fight on her own terms, which is really hard to do against Amanda, because even if your IQ is high, even if you're a Shevchenko who can be elusive and sort of set traps and all that, you still have to deal with Amanda's power at the end of the day. So we're asking someone to be such a, a, a next level elusive fighter to even have a chance against her. And certainly we're where we were, you know, a few months back and a few months before that. Who's next? What's next? Is there anyone next? I still like a stay busy featherweight title defense against Megan Anderson. She brings length. She brings size. She brings certain things to the table. I still think someone like Aspen Ladd at Bantamweight potentially can grow into a legitimate contender. But outside of Shevchenko, there's no one that can beat her. And it, it, it's that same conversation over again in which Dana didn't really want to have on Saturday. You know, his response this time was... Nunes beat her twice. What do you want me to do? Do it a third time? Well, yeah, because that would be the biggest fight of Valentina's career to finally get that third chance to to right what she thought was a wrong in that rematch. It just seems that Dana's more interested in using Valentina to do a Weili Zhang super fight than to do this for Amanda, which makes me ask you this, Luke, with all those things considered, the short talent pool, Dana not jumping over hills to make the trilogy with Valentina, how much longer do you think Amanda plies her trade? Well, I thought for sure there was at least a chance that after Saturday's win, even before, like heading into the fight, I was like, if she wins this, I mean, I don't even know who's out there for her. And then the way she won, I was like, wow, there's really nobody out there for her. But she did not seem ready to hang it up at this point. She seemed ready to say, okay, I've got a family coming. I've got some other things. I've deserved a, an earned a break. So I'll take one. Fair enough. Uh, who could argue otherwise? And then looking ahead, I'm not super opposed to the Megan Anderson fight. Listen, if Amanda Nunes wants to hold that belt and she's the top contender, she has a responsibility, I would argue Amanda Nunes does, to make sure that that belt stays in rotation, at least in terms of opportunities, for those title contenders. I don't think it's a very competitive fight, but strange things happen. And again, that's her responsibility as a title holder. At 135, I don't, I, I'm, I'm a little bit less convinced by the idea that an Irene Aldana or a Juliana Pena, or as you mentioned, Aspen Ladd, is really the fight to go forward here, right? I mean, yes, all three of those women are very, very talented, I certainly acknowledge. And maybe Pena, with her sort of relentless takedown threat, potentially poses something, but I think Aspen Ladd is way physically outmatched. And Aldana is certainly sort of interesting as a stick and mover, but I don't think we'll hold up under the power. She gets hit a lot. So it just doesn't really seem like that's the way to go. So here's what I think. I think Amanda Nunes is going to take a little bit of a break. Let this kind of thing sort itself out. See who emerges. Somebody get a big win. Somebody shows something. And then she can come back. And we're probably still going to favor Amanda Nunes no matter which way we go. But at least it's, there's a little bit of hype there. Right now, it just doesn't seem like anyone has, has jumped to the front of either of those divisions in a very dominant way. BC, let me pitch one last question back to you about Amanda, if I may. You had indicated there, Shevchenko versus Zhang. I got to tell you, I don't know if I like that too much. Zhang has this opportunity following the Ioanni and Jacek fight to build on something. They're pretty spectacular at straw weight. I think she's overmatched, if you ask me, against Shevchenko, who would be the bigger woman. And as we've seen, pretty dang talented. I I'm with you. I'd rather see Shevchenko versus Nunes 3 than Shevchenko versus Zhang, even though the latter is technically the much fresher matchup. Yeah, and not, and not only that, but look, I get people not even liking us putting the crown on on Nunes and saying she's the greatest of all time because MMA has been around for such a short amount of time. And again, what happens if she loses? Is that person the GOAT? Well, they're not. But even in that realm, the only person who has a chance at you know, besting Nunes in that conversation might be Valentina. And if we already thought she may have won at least one of those first two fights, giving her that chance to become a two division champion and, and stand on top of that mountain would be interesting. I'm still lament that we never got the Amanda rematch with Cyborg. It would have been a great payday. It would have given us a lot of answers to how quickly that first fight ended. Uh, but everything you said there is true. Um, you know, I don't know if Kayla Harrison's star can get there fast enough where it would even make sense for Amanda to want to move up and wait even more and fight her. So that window's closing, baby on the way. Maybe, you know, maybe we only get a couple more of these out of the line. It's going to be interesting to see. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. You gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.